Yeah guys, I have some awesome news. So here on the channel, we've been following the lives of a few termite colonies that supposedly farm a type of fungus called Termitomyces fungus, which the termites actively culture from hardened poop after eating decaying wood with the Termitomyces spores on them. The hardened poop forms a comb that houses the fungus, which appears the white fuzz, which is the fungus's root structure called mycelium, and the little white buds you see here. Those little white buds are what the termites eat. It's pretty cool because there aren't a lot of animals that we know of that actively farm their own food, but these termites do. Now over the past several months, we've been learning a lot about how the termites do this. As we watch the termites eat from decaying wood pieces that I hoped contained the necessary spores they needed to get their little fungus comb farms going, to building their first little black poop structures, and now to the ultimate day we've been waiting for. Guys, one of our termite colonies have done it. I'm pleased to announce that this week, upon peeking into one of the setups, I discovered that one of our termite colonies has officially passed Mother Nature's ultimate test. Successfully reaching the hardest point in the termite life cycle, which most other colonies fail to ever reach. The building of an actively growing Termitomyces fungus comb. You guys will be mind blown at their work. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel, Termite Edition. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, I couldn't be more proud of our starting termite colony. I've been dreaming of this day forever. We actually have a termite fungus comb. If you're new, you'll see why this is a big deal for all of us here on the channel, especially because to the best of my knowledge, this fungus farming process has never been documented on film before, like this. What you guys will see in this video is truly a treat. But later in this video, I have some other updates on previous ant colonies that I can't wait to share with you. Plus, I'll be needing your help and asking you a very important question in the end. So, as usual, do keep on watching until the end for all of that coming up. Before I show you the termite colony with the fat fungus comb, let me catch those of you who are new and are wondering what all this termite fungus comb business is about up to speed real quick. So as mentioned, these termites, which we've been keeping, are known scientifically as Macrotermes gilvis. And as mentioned, they farm a termite fungus called Termitomyces, which grows from special combs made of termite poop deep within the nests of these termites. At a special season in the year, these termites have a nuptial flight where reproductive kings and queens fly into the air in massive swarms, then pair up in a sort of marriage ritual. It was at this time that I captured a ton of these wedded termite royal pairs and placed them in test tubes. Some of these pairs went on to lay eggs, which then hatched into cute termite babies, which the termite pairs raised to adulthood from liquefied body tissues. Raising the first generation of workers from regurgitated body tissues was how this first army of termites was raised. But it eventually gets to the point where the termite royals are totally drained of such food stores and get really skinny. It's at this tipping point that the termites must go out and forage for decaying wood and leaves so they could from then on start farming their true food source, the termite fungus. But here's where the tricky part comes in. The decaying materials needed to have the termite fungus spores on them in order to get a termite fungus comb going. You see, at a certain point of the year, sometime after their annual nuptial flights, the termitomyces fungus send up mushrooms which sprout out from the top of the termite nests, releasing spores which are carried by winds, covering an entire area, including decaying material. So once the starting termite colonies reach the stage when it's time to start building their first fungus combs, the termites start to forage from their little birth chambers, building tunnels until they find decaying material to feed on. Decaying material that hopefully contains the spores. When the termites eat the decaying material, they go back to the nest, create little towers of poop, and from that dark poop tower sprouts the termitomyces fungus. And AC family, Behold, one of our colonies, Colony E, has managed to reach this stage. Check it out. That for sure now is an established termite fungus comb. You see the fuzz? 
That's the mycelium, the fungus's root type structure. And guys, I was giddy seeing all the little white buds. Yes, incredible to know that the termites managed to do it. They could now properly eat their termite fungus buds and no longer need to rely on the king and queen's liquefied body tissues. This was awesome. The fungus structure was super cool and looked like it attached to the ground at a few places. I also noticed a ton of new workers, which was probably due to all the new food the colony now had growing in their home. Isn't it amazing, AC family, that like humans, there are termites that are active farmers, as in creatures that tend and care for a growing crop, which the termites eat. Now all I needed to do was continue to provide the termites with decaying wood, perhaps even try different detritus types, like decaying leaves and such. And the termites would then be able to build on this starting fungus to make it bigger and bigger as the colony grew. I guess this also means that from here on in, we can expect Colony E to explode in population very soon, seeing as they now have a more nutrient-rich food for nourishment. The only problem I have now is, where do I go from here? This setup was kinda weird, and look, the colony has already started to build a foraging tunnel all the way to the cover on the ceiling. The colony will soon and very quickly run out of space within their test tube, because they now will need to do two things. One, find a place to expand their fungus comb into, because we've seen how big the fungus combs get. And two, create the royal chamber where the workers imprison the queen and king, the former of which will eventually blow up like a sausage and will definitely not fit in this test tube. Now I know that eventually the termites will identify that this test tube will be insufficient space, so they will likely start to burrow out chambers into the soil island they have. So should I just add maybe a couple inches of soil into the container, so that the termites can start to create a layout for their future nest? I think we have some time to decide how to approach this, so do let me know what you think we should do from here, in the comments. And no, I'm not willing to just remove the test tube from this container and completely bury it. Because that is what led to the death of some of our termite workers in the past. I think we just need to add onto this setup, which is clearly working, and simply provide the termites with what they need to start their future home planning. But so cool that we're at this stage, right? In terms of the other termite colonies, Colony C is also doing quite well. They're at the stage where they've built two poop structures, one which towers upward, and another which kind of forms a horizontal arch. It does look like these structures are starting to turn brown, but only time will tell if these will flourish further into the fungus combs which Colony E is now benefiting from. The colony in a petri dish is doing awesome. Look at how many mature workers the colony has now. I totally felt it was time for them to enjoy their first piece of decaying wood. I hoped and prayed it contained the necessary termitomyces spores the termites needed to get their fungus comb started. All right, and now for some ant updates. Last week, we welcomed to the channel and our ant room, a colony of Dracula ants. I love them so much. They've completely transformed the surface of their ant farm and have dug out some deep tunnels, housing a lot of brood, which means we have more Dracula ants on the way. I even leave the top feeding chute uncovered to allow the grass to grow out of it because the ants make no attempt to escape. Now AC family, here's something cool. Our colony of Polyrachis, aka spiny ants, that we've named the Blades of Midas. I'm happy to report that the colony is huge and thriving now. They love their ant jelly and have always had a sweet tooth. They devour large roaches on the daily. And look, the first main mother nest has been expanded upon and is now totally massive. Gosh, I love looking at the structure they've built using the debris from around the terrarium, all glued together using silk from their larvae. In their last video, you saw that they started building a satellite nest at one of the lantern balls high in the driftwood. And well, they've completed that nest now. And it's so cool to see that they've completely enclosed all areas of the ball with pieces of collected moss, which was exactly what I wanted them to do. But AC family, that's not all. Ready for this? Between both nests was something I literally just discovered yesterday. Look, they've built a second larger satellite nest into another ball lantern. And this one had a base and was totally massive. Check it out. Ain't it stunning, guys? All of this was great news and was an awesome start to the new year in the ant room. I hope you guys are as happy as I am with all of these updates. Now, at the start of the video, I mentioned that I'd be needing your help and would be asking you a very important question. And it's this. Colony E, 
our termite colony now with an official fungus comb, I think, has reached an important milestone, and thus, has earned the right to be given an official name on our channel. Colony E just doesn't have that nice of a ring to it. And so guys, I now ask you, what should we name our termite colony? They deserve an awesome name, seeing as they're the first Macrotermes Gilvis termite colony we've ever owned on the channel. And if we continue on the success streak, this will soon be an explosive termite colony, needing a pretty huge and epic setup. So I think now would be an awesome time to give them an official name. I can't wait to see what you guys suggest, and I will choose my top 5 favorite name suggestions for all of us to vote on in a future video. It was truly heartwarming to watch our termites tending their little fungus garden. And for those of you who have followed this termite story, you know how hard it was to get to this point. It just blew my mind that epic journeys of survival, like that of our fungus farming termites, happens right below our noses all the time, everywhere, within the darkened privacy of their underground nests. Whether it be termites or ants, I always feel being able to witness natural events like this is a huge opportunity for which I feel grateful, especially because all of us are on this journey of discovery with our critters together. I truly appreciate that you guys seem to love the termites and our ants just as much as I do. I read all of your comments and see all of you new subscribers joining the AC family and it totally warms my heart. Thank you guys. So until we return and assemble together again next week to catch the action and updates of the ants, termites, and other critters of our ant room, thank you all for watching and supporting the ants, termites, and critters. It's ant and termite love forever. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.